one should feel ashamed of wanting to, to do those things. Yes. <laughs> and what those things are, we will leave up to our audience. To... Our coconut oil loving fans. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my ponytail on. <laughs> I still no can't get over that. I did not wash my hair today, so you get a northeastern baseball cap. Here's a point of interest, Kate, or a okay. random question. How often do you wash your hair? Oh, far out. Okay. The reason <laughs> I reacted that way is because I had this conversation at work. So... For my hair type, and Lord knows I have tried, mm -hmm. I've tried for my hair to be what I want it to be on a daily basis, I have to wash it every day. So okay. unfortunately, like I've genuinely, I've tried the leave it a day, do the dry shampoo thing, do the this, do the that. I feel dirty if I don't wash my hair every single day <laughs> and there's, it's only on weekends and stuff that I won't, my hair's not long enough to put it all up into a ponytail. So there's always bits hanging down and I just feel gross if I don't do it. And I've tried because I know it's not good for you and I know you're supposed to train it, but I tried to do that all through COVID and all through the last six months of my life. But there's been enough going on for me in the past few months that, <laughs> Don't not force me. My hair. Don't <laughs> force me to leave my hair and don't at me because I, I don't want to hear it. Fair enough. So, I will. yeah. Because <laughs> I recall as well, I had this conversation at work. And then literally two days later, I thought, well, I will, I'll try and I'll do some dry shampoo and do a half up, half down. A co worker walked up to me and the first thing she said to me was, Oh, you didn't wash your hair today, did you? I suppose it looks okay. And that's how she she responded. And I was already self-conscious. I already felt like I needed a shower. And I was like, I'm out of here. Like, I'm going to shave my head, wear scissors. I'm going to cut it off. It was very, yeah, it was a visceral thing. Because I'm quite, thing, yeah, I'm quite thinking about my hair. I like it in a very particular way. And, yeah, not washing it does not help. So you'll get a baseball cap today because it's fucking atrocious. <laughs> it's not coiffed. It's not, it's not bloody voluminous. It's just under a hat. I love Sorry, that Doug, our new, our new podcast is hair <laughs> maintenance with Catherine Margaret. <laughs> Don't ask me, please. How often do you wash your hair, Dom? Uh, maybe once every two months. Yeah. Months. Months. I thought you were going to say days. Okay. I love that. Yeah. I wish I, I could do that. Yeah. My hair doesn't get washed very often. and But anyway, yeah. that we'll leave that for another topic. Let's do like worst hair stories. Like there's a horror story, you know, people's hair getting caught in things. Oh, far <gasps> out. Yeah. That yeah. would be a nightmare. There's there a reason, go. do you know, the next episode that I'm going to do um, <laughs> is going to be a series. You've actually just given it to me and I'm writing it down right now. On is, your paper? <laughs> no, I'm actually, I have a book. I have a notebook with a collection of West Wing stickers on the front of it. Um, but I'm going to do a series of stories about why products have warning labels on them and the mm. kinds of warning labels that products have because of the reasons why they'd have to put them on so dipshits don't do the things that you're not supposed to, like put your hair dryer in the bath when it's plugged into electricity. Um, so I might do an episode on that. That's a cool, cool, cool theme. Love it. All right, folks. Well, that's enough chit-chat. Let's Absolutely. get into some housekeeping. Hang on. Can I just pause you for one sec? Sure. Hi, Dom. Hi, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> We almost uh, forgot it. We almost forgot it. I just, yeah, I realised. All right, please with the housekeeping. All right, folks, we've got 30 seconds. Speed oh. round. Check us out on all the social media, podcast. While you're at it, go check us out at Patreon and give us an extra couple bucks and get access to all of our episodes early. Plus, you get a bonus episode every fucking week. Fucking. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Also, this year it's all about ratings and reviews for Kate. So, well, for Kate, not for yeah, me. me. Yeah, yeah. Five stars. <laughs> Five stars, okay. Five stars and good. don't worry about me because I don't want to know. <laughs> um, and this week's Boo Pod Network podcast feature is the Nightcap Nebula. And you just got to go check it out because it's weird and it's wonderful. And I'm not going to tell you who hosts it because they like to be kept anonymous. So, Ooh. Ooh. anonymous behavior. I love it. So, here is their promo. Boopity boop boop. Shabbatabop. Okay, Kate, Hello. let's finish off with housekeeping. Oh, housekeeping. <laughs> oh, they got a body shiver. That was good. And shall we get into this week's episode, unless you have any other pressing matters? I All I want to know is for this episode, what is, like, give me numerical value. What is my <laughs> limit on jokes I'm allowed to make? Please. <laughs> Okay, so folks know what this episode's about. I did have to give Kate a heads up because... Can we please, can I just read the text chat? Yes, you can. And this can count, this can count in the jokes. Okay, so <laughs> when news came out of this situation, um, Tom sent me a message and said, well, this Titanic submarine practically wrote itself for me. Um, I've got to do this when we record. And I said, right, all capitals, quickly followed by, how good of them to implode. (laughs) (laughs) Then I sent the, like, grimace face emoji, and then I said, I'm intrigued. I can't wait. And Dom said, oh, Lordy, Kate, get them out now before we record. (laughs) And I said, sorry, that was poor taste. Uh, But then Dom responded with, no, it was perfect. I pissed myself laughing out loud at the gym. (laughs) So we're both as, you know, uh yeah both as awful as each other but i just want to know i just want to know i am going to put a disclaimer here folks yeah. i understand this is a relevant and recent story yeah people have lost their lives there is some serious tragedy to this totally. but but if you've been on the internet in the past week we are not even close to being the only ones who are going to make fun of this go on instagram go on tiktok yeah. Like it's flooded and everyone's in the same space of going, we know we shouldn't make jokes about this, but, and you can find stuff that's going to be way more horrendous than anything that we're going to say. So please take everything with a grain of salt. Absolutely. And I'm not going to get into it, but I just want to also start with the fact that there are horrendous things happening every single day around the world. And it's not a competition of which is more horrendous at all but the fact that we pay more attention to some things over other things and are very selective on our high horses yep hippity horses horses, on our hobby horses so let's all just chill for a moment yeah and if you don't know know by now who we are and how we roll our intentions are the best and just we just like having some fun so join us for the ride Go play your computer games with a Logitech controller and listen to Blink 182. Bang. <laughs> like some people. I'm good. I'm, I'm excited for this app, Don, because I've, I've semi-purposefully, also not purposefully, um, read a lot about or listened to a lot of information about this. Um, mm. So I'm interested to hear a lot of the sort of fact-based stuff, which no doubt you'll, probably, you'll, you'll touch on, you'll go into. Uh, however, I, you know, say purposefully did that, but I'm also on school holiday. So I, you know, my, my main goal is to spend as much time in bed as possible. Um, <laughs> and I haven't been on my phone as much. So, you know, this is going to be good. I'm excited to learn. Well, as the reason why I've chosen this one is obviously because I'm a massive, you know, next level Titanic nerd. Huge. Uh, it's in my blood and I'm yep. just obsessed. And trust me, if someone gave me a free ride down in maybe not the Titan or Titan sister submersible, yep. I would still go down. Even after everything that I've read and seen, I would go down to go see it because that's how obsessed I am. Yes, of course, of course. But it maybe is. Maybe go with James Cameron. Yeah, James Cameron's all on it. So. Yeah. But I am also deeply, deeply afraid of the deep ocean. But for some reason, the combination of these submersibles, which are pretty damn safe and a shark can't get into it, 
and the fact that Titanic's down there, I would do it. So anyway, folks, we're going to go on a little bit of a story or journey for not just the Titan submersible. We want to set the context a little bit, Kate. We love science, don't we? Yes, science is a big up on our yeah. uh, menu. Yep. Exactly. So we're all about the science here. Pepper, <laughs> pepper it across. Just pepper it. Pepper it. So I want to go into a little bit about, you know, what the hell it takes to actually get down to somewhere as deep as the Titanic. Amazing. What are the forces that are working against the human race from doing this? Yeah. We're then going to go into a bit of a, I was going to say blow by blow. <laughs> oh. Jesus Christ. We're just going to go by uh, an implosion by implosion, implosion. of uh, notes and facts about this. What happened... <laughs> You know, because it's been a very quick timeline, so I just want to do mm. a high-level timeline of what's happened with t- the Titan submersible. Totally. And then also want to just share a little bit of backstory about one or two of the people that were on this ill-fated journey. adventure. Yeah. That's okay, so point. here we go, folks. The fraught journey to reach the Titanic. Ooh. Ooh. It's so so dramatic. I love it. It is. By the way, I love that My Heart Will Go On has already has been reintroduced into the top 100 songs because has it of really? this. It oh, has. God, I'm looking on Spotify immediately. Okay. But please go. Okay, on. but let's go. So the North Atlantic Ocean, where the Titan submersible and the Titanic were both launched and crashed, um, uh, it launched on a fateful trip to view the wreck of the Titanic. It is inhospitable as anywhere in the planet even beyond yeah um and it's outright hostile is the best way to describe this so let's just get into how to go to like we we yeah it's not something it's not a cool holiday destination and the thing is this whole journey it was already fraught with danger before they even went below the waves like it's just to get to that point of even just getting into the water is actually incredibly dangerous. So let's unpack that. Yep. We're going to take a 3,800 metre journey to understand why seeing the Titanic remains such a rare and dangerous adventure. It's even more rare than Mount Everest. Mm. One of the first big challenges of a deep sea expedition is manoeuvring a submersible from the deck of a ship into the water. Just think of that, it's Kate. Like, it's not like they're sitting on a nice little lake or pond, it's clear water. This is some of the most horrendous conditions yeah. ever. Understand. Think of the perfect storm. Yeah. I think of it regularly <laughs> and frequently. <laughs> I do. I think of it a lot when it comes to the ocean. Thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So just manoeuvring a submersible from the deck of a ship into the water, usually a huge ship is equipped with a crane. That's mm-hmm. usually how they do it. And if you've seen the movie Titanic, you get a bit of a picture of what we're talking about here. But the difference is in the case of the Titan, it was lowered into the water on a platform, check out our socials, and then scuba divers unclipped it from a platform once it was submerged. So okay. really interesting deployment of the Titan yeah. submersible and you should just go check out photos um on our socials because it explains how it's done it's can i super quick because you said at the top of this you know three thousand eight hundred kilometer dive right is that right yeah. Me- yeah. sorry meter meter um so 3.8 k yeah uh i saw the and i've seen it before but on uh, the social media the you know there's a really great uh graphic there's a great video that shows you comparatively monuments from around the world and how Mm. they sit in the ocean and that's like compared to where the titanic is and you get to something you know like you've got the statue of liberty and you've got and it's submerged underwater and it's like this is how tall the statue of liberty is we've seen her like she's she's a big bitch like she's tall and you sort of look at that and you go shit that's deep water and then it keeps going and then it keeps going and the you know the hotel in dubai which i can't recall the name of but that's there and that's f off big and then it goes again and again and again and again. And it's absolutely, it's just, again, we talk about those incomprehensible depths and incomprehensible heights. This is it. This is 100%. I have no concept of how deep that is. Even though you've shown me the Statue of Liberty standing under the water 
and it's not even close to that. No, it's it is otherworldly, and it yes. is incredibly. Uh, yeah, Hostile. we'll we'll go into a bit of the pressure that you're you're dealing with there, yep. and and if folks remember, I've been listening for a while. I went scuba diving recently, and the deepest that I got was like just almost twenty meters, and I think the max you can go is thirty or forty meters. Oh wow! You know, it's just we're at another few right. thousand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, but in the case of the Titan, it was lowered onto a platform, scuba divers, scuba divers unclip it, and then off it goes and it starts its long process of a dive. So because of that, it means that the Titan submersible can actually be launched off of a much smaller ship. Okay. Okay. Now, at the Earth's surface, Kate, you're experiencing one atmosphere's worth of pressure, just that's not a, like, scientific <laughs> necessarily measurement but just think of it in a relatable way what okay. you're experiencing now is equal to one right but under the ocean the pressure increases by the equivalent of one atmosphere for every 10 meters you go down right so 3,800 meter journey 380 times more pressure than like what you're experiencing, what you're experiencing. in this moment uh-huh. roughly Okay, yep. so at a depth of just 200 meters, the pressure is already 20 times greater than it is at sea level. From comparison, Kate, the pressure inside a car tire is roughly how much? Like one, um, one, how many one pressures <laughs> or one atmospheres? So, it like, is a PSI like sure. one? Let's call it a pit because I only do that by PSI. I tell the machine at the petrol station to put my tires to 32 PSI. Yeah. Is that no, one pressure? Just think about compared to the pressure that you're currently experiencing, would you oh, say like, it's like. Yeah, I don't, like five times. Okay. So I don't know. Is that. It's, a, it's only double oh, the okay. pressure. Right. Okay. Yeah. And you think like if someone pops pops, pops a tire or the amount of pressure that yeah. that tire I get, is on. I get frightened just pumping it up. Yeah. Like I genuinely just think it's going to explode in my face, which is an irrational fear, but that's uh, yeah. That's so that's lot. just double. Okay. Just that. Okay. Think of that sense of power. Right. So this intense pressure is the most ex- most significant risk to deep sea missions. Mm-hmm. So I've got some fun facts for you, Kate. Great. Ahmed Gabir undertook the deepest scuba dive on record in 2014. He reached how many metres, do you think, below the surface of the Red Sea he went? So you scuba dived about 20 metres, right, you said? Yeah. So, and then you could go about 30. So if you're trying to go, like, deeper, shoot, I reckon it's, like, 100, 100 metres, 150 metres. He reached 332 Ooh. meters shoot okay below the surface yeah That's, and how's how's the bends going for him see <laughs> it would have had to have been such a long and arduous long journey, journey back, back up because yeah. you can't rush rush no. and the reason is is because at dangerous levels of nitrogen build up in your blood supply and yeah. it yeah anyway Fun fact two: the operations of military submarines are classified by expert, but are classified. But experts say they typically max out at depths of about five hundred meters. Okay. Okay. And third fun fact is the deepest ever submarine rescue occurred at four hundred and eighty meters in nineteen seventy three, when two men were saved from the submersible Pisces three on the seabed off Ireland. Oh, to be true. Ireland. To be sure. We weren't alive then. Okay. <laughs> okay, so just in Thanks case you just, needed just the help. Just in case you're wondering. <laughs> now, deep sea expeditions have to grapple with entanglement hazards. Being tangled up in a fishing net or caught underneath a rock overhang could stop a mission from being able to return to the surface. Yeah. Submersibles rely on ballast to adjust their buoyancy and return to the surface. This involves dropping weight when it's time to ascend. And the Titan reportedly had seven levels of fallback so it could surface even if some of its systems failed. Which is okay. good to know they did something. Yeah, right? they did some safety precautions in some way. 
Now, at a depth of about a thousand meters, things change. Okay, a kilometer down, things are no longer what they seem. The ocean's what they call midnight zone begins. This is because sunlight no longer penetrates from the surface. Okay. At these depths, the temperature also drops to four degrees Celsius. So if a submersible suffers any power loss, Kate, its passengers would face extreme cold. Yeah. Like four degrees ain't pretty. No, that's chilly. Yeah. I'm going to have my flannel sheets and an extra blankie on my doona. You, again, check out our socials and you folks, you can see this is a tin fucking can. It yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. If you've not seen the news or, or anything, it's not something that I'm going to willingly hop into just to jet about on the surface, to be perfectly honest. If you fart in this, good <laughs> fucking written. <this. laughs> now, Sydney engineer Ron Allen designed the submersible that took Titanic filmmaker James Cameron to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, which is the deepest part of the ocean. Mm-hmm. He said, when you get beyond 1,000 metres, you're getting to the point where if something goes wrong, it's going to be quite catastrophic. As an adventurer, I guess you're trying to be self-sufficient. You don't rely on others for rescues. So you're trying to justify within yourself that you've considered all of the factors. Yeah. Now, experts had previously warned the company operating the Titan submersible, Ocean Gate, the <laughs> stupidest <laughs> name I've ever heard. Yeah. That without industry oversight, it was exposing passengers to possible catastrophic failure. And a former employee raised concerns that parts of the vessel were only rated for use down to 1,300 metres. Okay. That's not so, halfway. Yeah. If you're not understanding this, folks, and have uh, not been paying attention, this submersible was not rated, registered, checked. Any clearance for? With any for... authority anywhere. Right. That's a positive start. I'm signing that waiver. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Now, an American journalist, speaking of Kate, who joined the Titan expedition last year, reported signing a disclaimer that stated, the experimental submersible vehicle has not been approved or certified by any regulatory body. Any failure could cause severe injury or death. I don't like experimentals in the title. I know, right? Like, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Do you want to go on this experimental roller coaster? Sure. We're just testing out whether or not it's uh, going to stay on the tracks. No uh, seatbelts. No, no, no seat. No seat. No nothing. No, nah, no. Nah. James Cameron also does not want to ride this roller coaster. So, do you want? Are you on in? Yeah. If he's not doing it, I'm not doing. I'm not doing it. <laughs> That's actually now just my moving forward from here. If James Cameron is out, I'm out. Like if if JC doesn't want to do it, not for me. And by the way, folks, if you ever come for my man James Cameron, don't. Don't just start. you will have me too on your side oh. um, just because I know like I know but also I was just watching uh the first episode of the Arnold Schwarzenegger documentary short series on Netflix I adore him again don't at me with his bad behavior but JC would like brought him to Hollywood so you can thank him for that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but I will also come for you on behalf of Dominic and Arnold Schwarzenegger so don't. Yeah. He is a visionary. He, oh, yeah. nah, I can't even, I'm not, I can't even get that's into That's a whole it. other episode. Maybe I'm that's gonna... our Patreon special for yeah. today is Dom's hobby horse about James Cameron. <laughs> I am going to slide off my chair talking about <laughs> I can James see. Cameron. Dom just keeps like rubbing his chest like he's going to jump out of the, oh the screen and come at anyone who mentions James Cameron in a negative light. Yeah. I would, I would give anything to interview Meet, be yeah. friends with, yeah, be directed. I want to be in a James Cameron film. Oh, oh my god, that would be exquisite. Okay, anyway, sorry, folks. Sorry, sorry, folks. Now, in an enclosed space, there are two big challenges around storing oxygen for passengers to breathe and capturing the carbon dioxide they breathe out. Seen any sci fi film? That's pretty much the number one. <laughs> that's, the, that's the number one, uh, yeah, hazard. There's always an episode where they run out of oxygen Yeah, and the scrubbers aren't working. Now, the Titan was equipped with enough air for 96 hours and a scrubber to remove CO2. 
Now, if CO2 levels got too high aboard a submersible, passengers will lose consciousness and then mm -hmm. you're all shit fucked. You, I mean, you're going to go into this, Dom, but super quick. What was the journey supposed to take them, hours-wise? Do you know? Oh, I don't know, actually. That's oh. a really good question. I don't know how many hours, but it would be a hell of a lot less than 96. Than 96, they, yeah. Yeah, they put in so many contingencies. Um, I would say it's like less than 24 hours probably. Okay. I'll find out. Would be my guess, um, but it's a really great question. Now, any vehicle traversing these depths will have to contend with unpredictable and variable currents. In the area where the Titanic lies, the North Atlantic deep water current sweeps through waters from about 1,500 metres to 4,000 metres. So, folks, the power of this current is, is unmeasurable. Like, there's, it, you think a hurricane? Pfft. Whatever. That's a Whatever. That's a, that fart. is literally a fartness in a windstorm. Forget yeah. it. It's nothing. Another risk, Kate. Yes. Fire. Oh, what? Fire. In the ocean. One, yeah, but it is one of the biggest dangers undersea that, uh, well, the undersea vehicles can face. If an electrical fault causes even a small fire, it can create noxious fumes and burn through oxygen supplies. And there is a lot of electrical work that goes into making these things function and work. Absolutely. All of the things that are needed for the safety things and the buttons and the, the push starts and the television and the Xbox controllers takes a lot. So you yeah. don't want to, yeah. It's like going into space. Another challenge, because radio waves struggle to penetrate salt water, communication underwater relies on sonar measuring vibrations, if you don't know what sonar is, and so is far more limited. So the Titan could only really send basic text messages. It's not, okay. it's not like just not picking like up the phone and being like, yeah. hello. Um, sidebar, Dominic, it um, says it's said to take around eight hours to get down to the Titanic. Hmm. So 16 hours plus if you, you know, spinning around the Titanic for a minute looking at all of the nice things, let's round that up to like 12, 13 hours, you know, maybe 14 if they're taking their time. Um, so they had plenty of, of oxygen. Days worth, yeah. Days worth, yeah. Now, Ron Allum also says, to withstand the pressure at these depths, any structure must be perfect. Now, this is the critical point. Yeah. As he says, as an engineer, you're looking at geometric shapes. You might have a cylinder or a sphere, which are the best shapes for withstanding pressure. Yeah. The reason for that is, is because it is evenly spread around the full surface. There's yeah. no points which take on extra. More pressure than others. Yeah. Others, yeah. yeah. But the deal is that cylinder or that sphere, if it becomes out of shape or round or there's even just a little dint in it, all of a sudden the thing is going to collapse like a pancake and become completely flattened. Mm. Now, it's not going to collapse as quickly as you put, like, a square in or something like that. But <laughs> Yes, but it's know. going to pick up, yeah, there's no room for error. It's going to pick up any imperfections on that, that vehicle thing. Exactly. Yeah. So remember, <laughs> all the pressure is on the outside. All of it is trying to get inside into this little pressure sphere, which may be the capsule where people are going to be. On something like the Titan submersible, it's a very large end cap. So that big bulbousy thing at the front. And at Titanic depths, there's over 9,000 tons of pressure just on that end cap, which is probably 50 to 60,000 tons on the hull. So the cylinder. So the right. weakest point is actually the tube. The tube. The tube, <laughs> not the bulbousy nose part. Yeah, the bell end. Mm, the... <laughs> <laughs> and look, it's all fucking phallic as hell, folks. These things. Please, please. What is the submersible? Yeah. It's a giant dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're we're talking like immense, immense forces being yeah. put on incomprehensible the forces. Yeah. Fun facts, Kate. Yes, please. I love these. The environment is intensely ho intensely hostile to humans, but other species thrive quite happily. Oh, 
The Kervier's beaked whale holds the record for the deepest recorded dive by a mammal at an astonishing 2,992 metres. Tell me that they got a certificate. <laughs> get us world record. <laughs> just <laughs> pin to the side. Yeah, just slap it on the back of this thing so that when people are in their little submersible dicks, they see the whales will go past like, oh, shit, that's the world record breaker. Hey, that's hey. He's famous <laughs> up on land. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm here for that. So other things, other fun facts. There are a wild collection of fishies and eels and sponges and worms and jellyfish and even sharks. What has the light on its forehead? Dingle dingle. Yeah. Is that one live down there? That's a fishy. It's yeah. the famous one. That is a fishy. <laughs> <laughs> it does freaky. live down there. I thought that I would need to be prepared to encounter those kinds of creatures a lot more than I've had to in my life. And considering yeah. I don't spend a lot of time in the ocean, that might have something to do with it, but they were frightening when I was a child. Yeah, no, you're good, Kate. Okay. They're not going to come bite you on your toes while you sleep. Okay. Imagine if it was <gasps> one of them with a goddamn mushroom fungus and then it came onto the, oh, the God. worst case scenario. You're bringing it up, Kate. <laughs> I know. Oh, my God. You were stuck in a submersible 4,000 metres down. <laughs> Holy shit. There's with a whale a gone past with the Guinness World Record stapled to its back. I get distracted by that. I turn around and there's a mushroom fungus light bulb fish creature in the freaking tank. Like spitting oh, spores at you. Stop. <laughs> Keep your spores to yourself. <laughs> I'm not giving you consent to spore me. Kate's out there with oh, a hammer and chisel. Yeah. She's like, fuck the tube, fuck the tube. <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> Someone just give me a snorkel. I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> She's got a little Logitech yeah. controller going, why can't I get out? Go faster. Okay. In the event that had it had it been found intact, deep water, then a remote operated sub like the French Victor 6000 on a long cable would have been needed to attach a line to the Titan and winch it up to the surface. So that's if it had been found. By the way, spoiler alert, folks, it didn't. Ooh. Kate kind of, you know, mentioned an implosion I, I or two did. at the start. Yeah, I did, yeah. So if, if, if for whatever reason, Kate, they had lost power or they were stuck on the bottom, they would have had to send down one of these little what they call ROVs or rovers to go connect a cable and then they'd winch it and back up. Winch it back up again. Okay. Now ROVs can operate to depths much deeper than the Titanic wreck, and have been used to successfully raise fighter jets and other smaller ships. You know, they've done all sorts of recovery work because well, there's no people inside. Oh, I was just about to say. I'm like, well, why don't they just borrow one of those mm. and go down? But there's no peeps, so fair enough. Okay. They're all, you know, remote controlled. Yeah. Now, most scientific and industrial work done at these depths involves submersibles that don't carry humans. Professor Stefan Williams from the Australian Centre for Field Robotics says that you can often see as much using cameras on robotic vehicles that are operated remotely. Duh. <laughs> Doi, it's science. Now, we a man... Know. Right. A manned <laughs> submersible, or why has it got to be a manned? A human submersible. Yeah. They have their niche. I think it gives people that sense of being there, obviously, because you are there. there. (laughs) You're a professor. That's a hot take. (laughs) But when you are down there, you're looking through a very, very tiny porthole. Again, check our socials, folks. It is is very small what you're looking through. What sort of, are we talking like, I don't know, like Dinner plate. Dinner plate size. Like this. Yeah. So what you see in like the movies and things like that is not very accurate because they're just, you know, you think it's glass or whatever and there's like a big orb at the end. Those things can't go down as as deep. Mm -hmm. The the ones that go down to the Titanic, it's it's a metal sort of orb. The porthole's about dinner plate size, but then it so you get best viewpoint, it opens up into like a big cone outwards. Okay. You can see it on a picture. Um, 
So, but you're looking through a tiny porthole, he says. You don't have a broad expanded view. Light uh, attenuates pretty quickly. So you kind of, you can't really see what's right even in front of you. It's just, it, it's not great. Like it's yeah. not a, it's not like you get to, ooh, I've seen everything. Oh, God. So pretty. <laughs> this is Hank. So cool. You like you see a little bit of Hank's like little fin, and you're like, "Oh, bye, Hank!" Congratulations, mate. Well done. <laughs> okay, so let's wrap this bit up. The Titanic, just for reference, folks, hit the ocean floor at around two thirty a.m. on the morning of. Do you remember, Kate? Uh, May fourteenth. You're close. April fifteenth. Oh shit! I literally just took a shot in the dark. I had no idea, and I was looking at you thinking you're gonna ask me and i don't know <laughs> what year did it do you remember 1912 that's the one <laughs> but a more than a century on the world has changed beyond recognition but these depths remain at the very outer limits of the human experience can okay. i say something of course you can and you might touch on something here, but i had a really interesting conversation with your father on sunday oh fuck <laughs> very wise man uh he is very wise and he did say something that gave me a slightly different perspective because i made a comment saying you know goodness me these billionaires going down into the ocean you know how crazy how silly and then he said which i was i agree with he said you know this is not the first time in history like people that have ridiculous amounts of money have been exploring and you know, looking for different ways to see the earth or see experiences or do things that cost millions and millions of dollars to do. And they're the only people with the means to do so. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, yeah, you're right. Cause there, there's a hell of a lot in history that have discovered things and have seen things and have, you know, ha had the means to be able to discover places, people, things on planet earth and out of earth now as well. Um, that we wouldn't know a lot about had they not done it. Yeah. So for that part of it, I think it's pretty incredible and I think it, it is amazing. I think that's a, a perspective, a viewpoint that I need to be more accepting of and sure. grateful for. Um, I do also agree that the world has changed so much and we're going to start to discover more stuff. But 1912, the Titanic went down. Yeah. We're still not there yet, but isn't it just a little bit exciting that we will get there eventually? Like, I don't think this is something people are going to leave alone. This is going to be something that people are going to continue to develop stuff and learn from mistakes like this and learn from experiences and stuff like that. In our lifetime, mm. fingers crossed, all going well for you and I, we're going to see <laughs> things that have never been seen before. And there's something about that that's pretty fucking cool. And there's something about that that does make me really excited and grateful for an experience like this. Yes, it was fraught with some difficulties and such, but the next people that do it in five years' time, 10 years' time, 20 years' time are going to have learned so much to be able to go down there. And we will see this stuff and we'll be able to experience things that haven't been experienced before. So I kind of like that. So that was something that popped into my brain when I had that conversation with your papa. I can appreciate, and in theory, you're right, all those points make perfect sense. I think in this particular case, yeah, when you learn a little bit more, you might... I you might, might change, change my your, view. You might change your view. I might change my tune. Outrageous. Because you yeah. mean you're going to give me more facts and information and then that's supposed to inform how I think about something? That's absurd <laughs> and I don't stand for it. I'm all for that level of exploration yeah. and pushing and, you know, being that. I don't know if that is quite what was Has happening happened, in, yeah. the, was in this case. Perfect. See, that's why I haven't read anything about it. That's why I'm here. So that but you we can will see. Educate me. So let me give you some extra facts. Let's, okay. Let's do a quick little blow by blow <laughs> of what happened. Please. I love a blow by blow. Okie dokie. So on Friday, whichever it was, not last Friday. The, yes. The one before. Yeah, two, right. two Fridays ago, if you're listening to this, I believe. The expedition sets off from St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada. 
Newfoundland. Newfoundland. Great musical. Great musical from there. I love saying from, Newfoundland. From <laughs> Newfoundland. That was on the Friday. On the Saturday, the British billionaire and adventurer Hamish Harding, one of those on board the submersible, posts on Facebook. Due to the worst winter in New Finland in 40 years, this mission is likely to be the first and only manned mission to the Titanic in 2023. Ooh. A weather window has just opened up and we are going to attempt a dive tomorrow. I'm going to start using that for my social calendar. A weather, a weather window, window has <laughs> just opened up, so I will be joining you at the football tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, the conditions are a little erratic and I'll be staying in, but thanks yeah. so much. <laughs> Sunday, 8 a.m. GMT. The submersible originally aimed to start its descent. According to a post by Harding on Instagram, it actually started its descent later, according to the U.S. Coast Guard. 12 p.m. GMT. The submersible starts what should be a two-hour descent to the Titanic wreck, nearly 4,000 metres down, according to the U.S. Coast Guard. Two-hour descent? Yeah. Jeez, they were, they were hoofing it. <laughs> like let's put the let's put the NOS in the system and hit that button. <laughs> That's not as much. Yeah. And at 1.45, so 12 p.m., they should have started their two-hour descent. Right. At 1.45 p.m., so an hour and 45 minutes later, communications between the submersible and the surface vessel are lost. Hmm. So they are almost near the end of their two-hour descent, okay. but so they're near the deepest part. Yeah. But all of a sudden the, communications are lost at 1.45. The spaghetti marinara change. At 7 p.m., Titan is scheduled to return to the surface. The U.S. Coast Guard says but fails to appear. At 9.40 p.m., the U.S. Coast Guard receives a report about an overdue submersible from the research vessel Polar Prince about 900 nautical miles east of, the, of Cape Cod on the U.S. coast. So 1.45 p.m., it's not until 9.40, mm -hmm. eight hours later, yeah. that the U.S. Coast Guard receives a report of an overdue submersible. Okay. So no... Updates or anything in between that time. Alerts or anything are given. They've right. lost com communication, which I'm sure does happen. Sure. But, you yeah, know. you'd be anyway. a bit concerned. Monday. U.S. and Canadian ships and planes are swarming the area, some dropping sonar buoys that can monitor to a depth of almost 4,000 metres. The U.S. Coast Guard... Rear Admiral John Morga says officials have also asked commercial vessels for help. Tuesday, 2.50 p.m. GMT. France says it will help the search by deploying Atalante, a ship equipped with a deep sea diving vessel. It is expected to arrive late the next day on Wednesday. During that same day, the Tuesday, sounds were detected over several hours by Canadian Lockheed P-3 Orion aircraft equipped with gear to trace submarines. CNN and Rolling Stone magazine report banging sounds at 30 meter intervals, 30 minute intervals, and had been detected in okay. the area. Mm -hmm. Wednesday, the following day, when the French thing was meant to arrive, the US Coast Guard, US Navy, Canadian Coast Guard, and Ocean Gate expeditions establish a unified command to handle the search. 6 a.m. that day, GMT. U.S. Coast Guard confirms Canadian P-3 aircraft detected underwater noises. It says remotely operated vehicles, ROVs, mm -hmm. searches are directed to the area of the sounds and the data is also sent to the U.S. Navy experts for analysis. Okay. 5 p.m. GMT. That same day, U.S. Coast Guard says more underwater noises were detected and that the search area had increased to two times the size of Connecticut. It's I love that big. they're not going to use any kind of measuring. This is the American way, <laughs> and I'm going to tell you how big Connecticut is, and then I'll quickly um, uh, adapt that, translate mm -hmm. that into um, tennis courts and football fields. So you keep talking. 
Thank you, Catherine. You're welcome. I can't have our listeners going, how big's Connecticut? Okay. How big's the ocean? No doubt it's big, but if unless you've really got tennis courts to compare it to, are you really understanding how big it is? Probably not. And funnily enough, even if you live in the States, you probably don't <laughs> fucking know how big Connecticut is. you got to live in Connecticut to know how Connecticut, how big it is. How and even then you probably don't. Exactly. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be so mean, but I'm geography is not your strong suit, US folks. It's now not late. Either, so. On Wednesday that same day, more vessels, including a French research ship equipped with a deep sea diving vessel, were due to arrive to assist the complex response effort, which covers an area twice the size of Connecticut, it says. (laughs) I can just imagine the French smoking (laughs) about Connecticut. Connecticut, I I don't believe it's twice as big as Connecticut. Oh, look, (laughs) it is Hank, the whale who goes as deep as he does. Congratulations, (laughs) Hank. (laughs) Sorry, our French listeners. Um, 1.45 a.m. that day, Titanic submarine search. Uh, The U.S. Coast Guard says noises were heard yesterday. Okay, so these noises are just ongoing. Now, Thursday, the next day, 10 a.m. GMT, approximate deadline for when the air in the submersible was expected to run out. Based on the U.S. Coast Guard's estimate the t- that the Titan could have up to 96 hours of air supply from the time it was sealed. Around 12 p.m. GMT, two remotely operated vehicles have been deployed as part of the search effort. Experts say it is still unclear whether the submersible is on the, sur- on the surface or on the seabed and warn weeks of intense survey may be required to locate it. Around 3 p.m. on the Thursday, GMT, Canadian Navy ship carrying a medical team specializing in dive medicine arrives on the scene. 3.48 p.m. GMT, the U.S. Coast Guard says a debris field was discovered within the search area by a remotely operated vehicle near the Titanic wreck. 7 p.m. GMT, U.S. Coast Guard holds a press conference after announcing discovery of the debris. And then 8 p.m. GMT, five crew members aboard the submersible Titan were probably killed instantly in a catastrophic implosion, the U.S. Coast Guard says. Rear Admiral John Morgan, the first Coast Guard District commander, said a remotely operated vehicle discovered the tail cone of the Titan sub and the debris is consistent with a catastrophic loss of the pressure chamber. Mm. A large debris field containing five major pieces of the vessel was spotted by a remotely operated vehicle scouring the seabed near the Titanic wreck site 400 miles south of St. John's, Newfoundland, officials have said. And that is the very quick, you know, few days in which the Titan story unfolded. Unfolded. Okay. Whilst you were explaining that part, I was trying to do some quick mathematics. Now we'll all agree. I mm-hmm. mathematics is not my strong suit. My strong suit. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. One uh tennis court is five hundred and ninety-five uh meters squared. Meters. Okay. So that's zero point zero 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 five nine five kilometers. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so one million tennis courts is 595 kilometers squared. Okay. Connecticut is 13,023 kilometers squared. Okay? So so 1 million tennis courts fits into just under 600 kilometers squared. So then you have to times that by shit to get to 13,000. So we're talking billions of tennis courts almost. And then double that again because it was twice the size size of Connecticut. Connecticut. So you've thrown me right off with 26,046 kilometres squared, Um, which if we had more time on the pod, I'd be able to work out. But do you know what? For our Patreon listeners, that can be the bonus for you, as I'm sure people are listening and doing mathematics. Um, And I'll be able to tell you in precise detail how many tennis courts fit into Connecticut times two. Okay. <laughs> Why did I pick fucking tennis courts? I should have picked football fields because they're bigger. They're so, t- like so many times bigger. You still got to do the math, babe. Oh, so. fuck. 
that's you need the equation, not the not I the know. figures. Not the figures. I know. All right. I'm sure. Maybe can you just Google how many tennis courts fit into the size of Connecticut? I did. There's uh, no answer. <laughs> that one. Go create that website. Please. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna start making it. All right. Let's wrap this up nice okay. and quick, smart folks. All right. And because we've got to get onto the special thing. So let's just unpack a little bit about what happened yes, here please. and a bit of the backstory. Now, the five people aboard a submersible missing near the Titanic wreck off the coast of North America died in what appears to have been a catastrophic implosion, the US Coast Guard official says. Now, the implosion likely occurred near the Titanic shipwreck mm. where the submersible was headed. So they were near the end. They were just mere minutes away from getting to the Titanic. The debris is consistent with the catastrophic loss. We all know this. An unmanned deep sea robot deployed um, uh, on the Thursday morning, about 488 metres from the bow of the Cetriol wreck, four kilometres below the surface. Soon after the debris of the vessel was found, Ocean Gate Expeditions, the US based company that operated the Titan submersible, released a statement confirming the deaths. <laughs> We now believe that our CEO, so the CEO of Ocean Gate was on this, Kate. Right. If you did not know. Uh, okay. And was that the Henry man or no? Different. Not no, the man that built one. it. Okay. We now believe that our CEO, Stockton Rush, Shazada Dawood, and his son, Suleiman Dawood, Hamish Harding, was the one we were talking about before, yep. and Paul Henri Najolet have sadly been lost, the company said. These men were true explorers who shared a distinct spirit of adventure and a deep passion for exploring and protecting the world's oceans. I just want to clarify the fact that the billionaire that everyone's making jokes about, Shazada Dawood, yeah. his son, Sulman Dawood, was, was a him. mere teenager. And his aunt has come out recently and said that he really didn't want to go. He was frightened to death about going. And the only reason he went is that he wanted to make his dad proud his dad and his happened. dad really. Because yeah. his dad was obsessed with Titanic yes. as well, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. That's devastating that he didn't want to go. This poor kid. Yeah. Lost his life and it wasn't his fucking decision. I mm. hate that makes me really That's, angry. Yeah, yeah. Now, Pakistan, uh, so some of these people were Pakistani, have offered their country's condolences to the Dawood family. The Dawoods are members of one of Pakistan's most prominent families. They say, our deepest condolences to the Dawood family and the family of other passengers on the sad news about the fate of Titanic submersible in the North Atlantic. That was released on Twitter. Oh, I just If you're going to, don't use Twitter as yeah. your way of announcing your condolences. It's not pretty. No. Now, RMS Titanic, the company that owns the salvage rights to the Titanic shipwreck, described Titanic expert Paul Henri Najolet as an inspirational leader. So Paul Henri was actually worked for the company that owns the, the shipwreck wreck. of the Titanic. Okay. Yes. Which is really kind of cool. That's kind of cool. How did they make money from that? Though? Yeah. I don't know. Now, the 77-year-old was on the Titan after completing 37 dives to the wreck and supervised the recovery of 5,000 artifacts, according to his company profile. Wow. The maritime world has lost an iconic and, iconic and inspirational leader in deep-sea exploration, and we have lost a dear and treasured friend, the company said in the statement. Rescue teams from several countries have spent days searching thousands of square kilometres of open seas with planes and ships of any sign of the of the 6.7 metre time. Um, we all know what happened. Mm. Now, submarine expert Eric Fossil from the University of Adelaide told ABC News Breakfast that a flood or a failure of the pressure vessel would have likely caused the implosion. Yeah, okay. They're never going to be able to know, though. Like, the no. destruction is just... Now, he said that kind of catastrophic event would have happened within 20 milliseconds. Yeah. So he says they wouldn't have even realised that they were dying because they cannot process that information that quickly, he said. Yeah. The, the Titan's pressure hull was made of a combination of titanium and a composite material of carbon fibres, which were, which he described as very new. So this is where the dodgy stuff happens, Kate. Okay. 
So we have two opposite effects. The titanium pressure vessel is something which is very elastic, so it can crush and then restore its initial shape, Professor Fussell explained. Whereas the carbon fibers are something which is completely different. It's basically something very stiff. So we have two very opposite forces at work. He said it's an experimental technology and it is way too early to tell whether that design caused the issues. Maybe try that without people inside of it. Yeah. Send it down with one of the rovers and see what happens without people inside of it. Mm -hmm. Now, some people ask questions about these noises. All yeah. you conspiracy theory people out there, my goodness. Amazing. Here we go. So the detection of undersea noises on the Tuesday and the Wednesday using sonar buoys dropped from Canadian aircraft had temporarily offered hope that the people on board the semester were alive and trying to communicate by banging on the hull. But officials have warned that analysis of the sound was inconclusive and that the noises might not have emanated from the time at all. Yeah. There doesn't appear to be any relation between the noises and the location of the debris found on the seafloor. The search had grown increasingly desperate as the estimated 96-hour air supply was expected to run out. So the Titanic, which sank in 1912 on its maiden voyage after hitting an iceberg, killing more than 1,500 people, lies about, you know, whatever, from Massachusetts um, and Newfoundland. The expedition to the wreck, which Ocean Gate had been operating since 2021, cost 250,000 US dollars per person, mm -hmm. according to Ocean Gate's website. Wow. Fuck me. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of coin. Questions about Titan safety were raised in 2018 during a symposium of the submersible industry experts and in, an, and in a lawsuit by Ocean Gate's former head of marine operations, which was settled later that year. Professor Fusel said going to the depths of the Titanic was more, was more risky than going to space. That's why it's a very conservative engineering niche, he said. We tend to evolve things slowly in the submersible and submarine domain for good reasons. Yeah. So anyway, folks, to wrap up, there is, and I don't want to, you know, assume anything, right? It's going to, a lot, a lot more is going to come over out over the investigation, but it is alleged that they knowingly knew that there were severe failures mm -hmm. and risks and known uh, wear and tear of this material, Kate. Okay. okay that this submersible, which had already done a quite a few dives previously, it didn't, wasn't getting checked and there was a shelf life of eventually it's going to, you know, Have not a, suffer be a safe. Catas catastrophic yeah. implosion with people inside uh, it. Yeah. And the material that it was made from was fundamentally flawed and mm -hmm. never, you know, was not tested, was not approved, was not anything. It was so experimental and just repetitive use of it at that sort of pressure it was yeah, of course. you know fatally flawed and then it you know but they knowingly i think there is allegations that they knowingly knew that and still continue to do it yeah that's bad but if you would like to learn a little bit more folks about the rather shocking allegations and uh, yeah, some of the things that have come to light about this, the CEO and the risks that were t made. Yeah. You'll need to stick around for our Brickin' It episode, Brickies. which is on our Patreon. Yay. Before you go, Dom, before we go, I'll, I'll join you on the Patreon one. Um, yeah. I, again, had a really good time on um, socials and there's, if you want to comprehend what, an implosion look like, looks like you can just look that up that's fine um but there's been some really good ones of uh like trains train oil tankers mm. and they show that and they're like keep in mind that that's only one atmospheric pressure that mm -hmm. this is happening in times that by 500 and that's what you would have happened down in the in the ocean so it's just yeah that sort of wrapped my head into it i was like Oh yeah, shit. They would have had no time to process that they were dying. That's yeah. nuts. Very quick. Mm. That's the but, one saving grace, I suppose. Yeah, it is. It's just there's some very dodgy things that were happening, and I, oh, I can't looking wait to forward that. to share that with you, Catherine. Excellent. And we'll even get our man James Cameron to weigh in on the whole situation JC. as well. Yes. 
Jace, hey, my boy. All right, folks, thanks for joining us this week. And we look forward to seeing you next week for whatever the fuck Kate's going to bring us. Warning labels, it seems. Warning labels. <laughs> ah, ah, love you guys. And thank you for joining. Thank you for sharing your story, Dom, or the story of the Titan. I was excited to see whilst you're at the gym at half past six the other morning. <laughs> so excited. Yay. Love see you guys. See you next week. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Bye.